Hey guys, this is Vivek here and I have been getting questions like how does an induction motor work? What is the working principle of an induction motor? How can we simply understand an induction motor works? And I am getting this question on Quora, on YouTube. So today in this video I am going to describe you about the working principle of three phase induction motor in a very simple way and I am going to show you the simple analysis. So let's just get started. So what is a three-phase induction motor? Obviously you know that a three-phase induction motor has few parts. Let us see. There is an outer part which we call stator. Okay. Then there is an internal part which we call rotor. Okay. The stator is the stationary part while the rotor is the rotating part. This is the rotor internal and this is the stator. Okay. Now this stator carries three-phase windings. There are three phase windings like something kind of this. Okay, I am not making a, an actual figure up here. So, and the rotor also carries windings. Okay, the rotor also carries windings. Now, when the stator, what is the working principle? When the stator is supplied through three phase AC, okay, in short, when the, when we supply the rotor, when we supply the stator with three phase AC, three phase AC supply, the three phase AC causes creation of rotating magnetic field. I am soon coming to what is rotating magnetic field. So rotating magnetic field, this rotating magnetic field links up with the rotor okay, and the rotor begins to rotate. So this is the simplest definition or simplest explanation of how does an induction motor works. Now we are going to see what is rotating magnetic field, how it links with the rotor and how the rotor begins to rotate. So let's see what happens. So before going ahead to the working principle, first we need to understand the rotating magnetic field. So here on the screen you can see that I have drawn the three, fla three phase flux distribution. Okay. Now our three phase supply is VR vy and vv okay ryb so vr is vm sin omega t vy is vm sin omega t minus 120 degree and vv is minus 240 degree from the vr okay so three phase uh, ac supply is this one now corresponding to this three phase ac voltage we have three phase flux okay so we have the R phase flux, Y phase flux and the B phase flux. The M factor indicates the maximum value as you know the peak value okay and this is the angle. So phi R is phi M sin omega T it is at 0 degree angle. We consider it as, as 0 degree angle. So the phi Y will be at minus 120 degree and phi B will be at minus 240 degree. So I have drawn this uh, three phase flux over here. This is at 0 degree phi r, this is at minus 120 degree and this is at 240 degree. So phi r, phi y, phi b. Okay. So this is the three phase flux. Now let us, let us uh, do some analysis. Let us take this omega t factor. Here I am writing sin omega t. So this is time dependent factor. Okay. With uh, time this factor changes. So let, let us take a uh, few few of the instances when omega t becomes 60 degree. Now we take omega t equal to 60 degree and we increase it like 60 degree. Then we will be taking it at an interval of 120 degree, then 180 degree. So we will be taking this at 60 degree interval. Okay, so let's just see how it works. So first we take at omega t equal to 0 degree. So at omega t equal to 0 degree, what happens? That the phi r is phi m sin omega t phi y is phi m sin omega t minus 120 and phi b is phi m sin omega t minus 240. At omega t equal to 0, if you put uh, 0 degree at omega t in these three equations, you will be getting that phi r is 0, phi y is minus 0 0.866 of phi m and phi b is plus 0 0.866 of phi m. So phi r is 0, so you can see there is no phi r here in this diagram, right? Then because it is 0, so it has no value. Now phi y is minus 0.866 of phi m. 
ignore this 0.866 just see that this is minus and this is phi m if you go in the previous slide you will see this is the direction of phi m okay this is the direction of phi m so minus phi m will be in opposite direction that's why I have what I have done here the phi m is in the opposite direction in this way okay and phi b is in the plus direction so phi b is in normal direction now when this two these two uh, uh, these two parameters are vector so we vectorially add them and the resultant is this one this black head black arrow head okay so this is the resultant so this is at omega t equal to 0 degree this is the resultant flux resultant air gap flux now we come to omega t equal to 60 degree as i said that i will be taking at a 60 degree interval so now we are at 60 degree so at 60 degree when we are putting omega t equal to 60 we will be getting phi r uh, 0.866 of phi m so this is phi r at 0.866 of phi m it is positive then phi y is again negative you see the phi y was how how it was like phi r was in this direction phi y was in this direction so minus phi y will be again in this direction right so that's what we are doing here the phi y is in this direction okay so phi r and phi y and phi b is zero so it is not uh, showing up here so phi r and phi y when we take the vector addition the resultant is in this direction which means the resultant magnetic field is in this direction sorry this direction okay so it is in this direction so this is at omega t equal to 60 degree now coming to omega t equal to 120 degree when we are taking 120 degree again putting the 120 degree in this three equations so we will be getting phi r equal to 0.866 of phi m so again phi r is positive in this direction and uh, phi y is zero so it is not showing up here phi b is minus 0.866 of phi m if you put uh, omega t equal to 120 degree you will be getting phi b equal to minus 0.866 of phi m so phi b is in the negative direction so phi b is in this direction okay so phi r and phi b are in this direction so we again vectorially add them and the resultant flux is now in this direction now we come to omega t equal to 180 degree at omega t equal to 180 degree what we will be seeing that the phi r is 0 so it is not showing here phi y is 0.866 of phi m so phi y is 0.866 of phi m so it is in here okay and phi b is in minus 0.866 of phi m so phi b is in negative direction okay so phi r phi y and phi b this is the natural sequence now phi b is in the negative direction so phi b minus phi b becomes this one and plus phi y is in this direction so you can see that the plus phi y is in this direction and phi b is in this direction when we add them vectorially the resultant flux is in this direction okay now we come to 240 degree again the same case when we put uh, omega t equal to 240 degree so we will be getting the phi b phi r equal to minus 0.866 of phi m so it is in the negative direction okay and phi y is is in the positive direction so phi y is this one okay so phi y is 0.866 of phi m and phi b is zero so the resultant of this phi r and phi y is this one okay in this direction now let us look uh, at the condition when omega t is equal to 360 degree so when we are going to put omega t equal to 360 degree we will be getting phi r equal to 0 so it will not be showing up here phi y will be minus 0.866 of phi m so phi y is in the negative direction as you can see it is in this direction okay and phi b is positive so phi b is 0.866 of phi m so phi b is in the this direction okay so it is in this direction so now we have uh, these two vectors so resultant of these two vector is in this direction you can see okay so the resultant is in this direction so this is the resultant magnetic flux now come here comes the interesting part let us just look uh, at the results here at omega t equal to 360 degree what we are getting at omega t equal to 360 degree we are getting phi r 0 phi y negative and phi y positive now let us look at the 0 degree in 0 degree also the phi r is 0 phi y is negative and phi b is positive 
okay so here all this vector diagram this one and the 360 degree diagram you can see both are same okay so whether it's 360 degree or 0 degree it is the same phasor diagram okay so now we have seen uh, analysis for omega t equal to 0 then 60 then 120 180 to 40 300 and 360 degree each of these have been taken at an interval of 60 degree okay so we take the analysis at 60 degree angle because that makes the analysis quite simple for us now we look uh, now we again look uh, through all these uh, images okay so at omega t equal to 0 degree okay so this is the direction of the resultant magnetic field this is the resultant magnetic field or the air gap plus what we say okay this one in uh, at omega t equal to 60 degree this is the resultant omega t equal to 120 degree then 180 degree then 240 degree then 300 degree and then 360 degree now let us look again in this diagram okay so you can see that at zero degree this is the direction of resultant magnetic field then it comes to here so it has rotated in this direction then from here it comes here then it again goes here and in this way this and finally back to its own position so you can see if you see from zero degree you can see this ro resultant magnetic field is rotating this is what we call the air gap flux okay which is rotating in nature we are taking at different instances at of omega t at 60 degree then 120 degree and then we are getting that the resultant magnetic field is rotating one so here it proves okay that's why at omega t equal to 360 degree and 0 degree the resultant magnetic field is same now we take all these pictures at different instant of omega t and superimpose on each other so we will be getting this one okay this is nothing omit uh, all uh, other uh, things that are written here just ignore this okay and i must mention this picture is not to the scale okay this is just a rough schematic so you just uh, look at the resultant magnetic field this is at 0 degree this is at 60 degree then 120 degree then 180 degree then 240 degree then 300 degree and then 360 degree again so at omega t equal to 0 degree and 360 degree so it again it rotates through this path and comes to the same point okay this proves that the air gap magnetic field is the rotating one okay and uh, how does it generate when we give three phase balance ac supply vr vy and vb as we saw in the previous slide now this is how an induction motor looks like this is a rotor there are two types of rotor squirrel case uh, rotor and then there is a slip ring, slip ring kind of rotor okay but i'm not going to the construction part okay so this is the rotor and this is the stator uh, uh, conductor these are the stator conductors okay three phase uh, stator conductors so three phase supply is given to the stator and the air gap magnetic field is generated here here is where the rotating magnetic field is generated in the in this white space okay this is the air air gap flux and what happens let us see now we have generated the rotate uh, rotating magnetic field okay let, let us consider the motor is at standstill condition so the rotor carries some conductor okay something like this and the magnetic field is rotating one okay so the rotating magnetic field is there now this rotor what it does at a standstill condition can understand that when the magnetic field is rotating when we just have started the motor the air gap magnetic field is rotating so this rotor conductor cuts the magnetic field and it generates its own induced emf okay because it is an inductor at in simple analysis this is just an inductor so uh, it cuts the magnetic field and it generates its own induced emf now the rotor conductor is short circuited as a result of this this induced emf causes a current to flow through this rotor conductor okay the current tries to flow through this magnetic uh, sorry through this uh, rotor conductor now this this current through the rotor conductor generates its own flux because this is an inductor so as the current is flowing so the rotor generates its own flux now 
from the very famous Lenz law we know E is equal to minus L sorry E is equal to minus d phi dt ok so the induced EMF the induced EMF is inversely or it tries the induced EMF tries to oppose the very cause of its own creation so here the cause of creation is the air gap magnetic field ok so to oppose this the, ro the this rotor conductor generates its magnetic field in the opposing uh, direction ok so it uh, uh, does it in this in such a manner that both of these flux the stator flux and the rotor flux both of these flux are generated ok and both of these uh, tries uh, the rotor flux tries to compensate with the uh, stator flux and they are at a different angle so when we vectorially add them there is a uh, resultant magnetic flux ok now the rotor is free to rotate so in the effect of this resultant magnetic field the rotor begins to rotate ok another way of simply describing is it that let's say the rotor is in at the standstill the rotating magnetic field cuts the rotor conductor and the rotor generates its EMF then it, it generates its own current ok a current is generated within the rotor conductor now this current begins to flow through the rotor conductor and because of this now we know from the Lenz law that the effect tries to oppose the cause or stop the cause so here the cause is the rotating magnetic field ok and the effect is the current generated in the rotor so the rotor what the rotor will try the rotor will try to stop this current flowing through it so it will try to stop the effect of cut uh, cutting the, the cutting effect of magnetic field so as a result the rotor will begin to rotate with the magnetic field so that the so that the rotor and the magnetic field has no relative velocity and hence the rotor doesn't have to cut the any magnetic flux ok and it has zero relative velocity so it would have to cut no magnetic flux and hence the rotor rotates ok so this is the simplest analysis however the rotor never the rotor tries to catch up with the stator air gap flux but it never never it, it fails to do so ok if the uh, rotating magnetic field is at uh, 1500 rpm so for a good machine the uh, uh, st the rotor will be at uh, 1450 to 1470 or something like that ok so the, the this the gap between this two speed is known as the slip ok what we call as slip the relative velocity between stator air gap flux and the rotor is zero in case of synchronous motor not in case of induction motor ok and hence the uh, rotor in the induction motor keeps on rotating ok so thanks for watching and I hope that uh, this video was quite helpful for you so uh, like comment share and subscribe to our channel thank you for seeing your responses thank you for uh, appreciating my work uh, it's truly uh, very much overwhelming ok so just subscribe to my channel to get uh, such interesting videos on electrical engineering in future so this is Vivek Chavez signing off thank you